Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr McNamara. Roberts, you have the thank call. you, Chair, and thank you all for attending today. My questions are to do with the um, licensees. Now, I understand they've had really severe problems. Um, they've been really suppressed and not been able to make good income. And I understand also that they have had some discussions in recent times with some light coming at the end of the tunnel. So that's, that's the background. You know about the licensees. The government has announced Services Australia. Alarmingly, this sounds like yet another network which may be competing with or replicating the provision of services that our Australia Post Office Network does or is able to provide from an Australia Post perspective. Can you provide, advise, will it make the established government network of post offices, that's 2850 of them, of which are privately owned, redundant or unprofitable, and when will these licensees and employees be told what is happening? Thank you very much, Senator. Um, I think one... I think I will, could I pass my colleague here in a moment to talk about the Services Australia piece? Could I, may I just first of all address your opening comment? Um, in my two years of being here in this role, um, Senator here has always kept me, hold me to the role of the licensed post offices in communities. I'm very pleased to tell you that their revenues of the licensed post offices in the first quarter of this year were up 7%. And when I look back at our payments we made to post offices over the whole of last year, those costs increased by, I think, 7.5%. I'll double check that number and we'll come back to you if it's different, but I'm pretty sure 7.5%. We put in place last year a number of initiatives to support the licensed post offices. They're our brand in the community. When we signed the historic Bank of Post Agreement, we increased minimum payments by 25%. We upped minimum payments on transaction fees by 50%. We've had the great Aussie coin hunt, which has been an incredibly successful initiative to bring people through the door. The post offices are profitable. The post offices are growing, and I'm very pleased to report that our licensed post offices are growing faster, even faster than our corporate stores. Um, I will now pass the mic to address the issue in Services Australia. If I could just intervene, um, I acknowledge that some progress has been made, but they're still feeling neglected, some of them. So Could, that's, that's Senator, what I'm if guess. you please, if there are any licensed post offices that you're in communication with that you feel are being neglected, please do let me know. We, are, we held a community stakeholder board for post offices called Alplax. Um, my colleague behind us, who's Nicole Sheffield, who runs the community and consumer business, attends every one of those meetings, as does Dave McNamara, and I think I've attended every one of them. We regularly meet, and I spoke just last week with the head of POEL, and we regularly meet with the head of LPOG. Perhaps neglected was the wrong word. Perhaps they, they still have issues to address. So I'll pass that on. I would very much welcome them. that opportunity. Thank you. And just in relation to the Services Australia issue, um, uh, the government is working through uh, future directions for Services Australia, but there is certainly no suggestion that in any way would uh, cut across or interfere what uh, uh, the, uh, has been set out around the Australia Post's uh, <coughs> a, the network, and the government has recently reaffirmed uh, through its uh, regulatory structure, the maintenance of the current post office structure, and also the work that Ms Holgate and her team are doing to improve services through the licensed post office network. So you, you can assure the uh, licensed post office that they will not be disadvantaged for the introduction of services? I'm, I'm not aware of any suggestion that the licensed post office network will be affected by the planning for Services Australia. Okay, so you can assure that. That's good. Um, will the Services Australia network Will the licensed post offices be part of the Services Australia network and how, for example, will Services Australia address the needs of people in rural and regional areas and especially the aged or disabled who may not be able to use a computer? There's plenty of work going on in relation to Services Australia and we are certainly talking with the human services portfolio to ensure that uh, every opportunity is provided for the participation of the post office and the network of post office in the future provision of services. Uh, it's still too early to indicate uh, the future shape of Services Australia, but certainly the work is going on within government as to how we maximise the role of Australia Post as a service delivery entity for that network. Okay, thank you. So as I said uh, some time ago, uh, earlier on, the um, Australia Post is working to improve the transactional model for the licensees. 
The current rate paid to licensees per transaction, though, seems to be based on how long it takes to service the needs of a tech-savvy hipster, when the reality is that many of these hard-working Australians are also servicing the needs of the aged and the disadvantaged, where more time per transaction is required, and as a result, many licensees are earning less, tax, less and, than award rates. So uh, what can Australia Post do to provide additional support for mm. licensed post offices now, particularly those who have a small customer base or who have a larger number of clients who are aged or disadvantaged? Thank you, Senator. I would like to share with you a small few facts and then give David the opportunity to share with you um, some details of our new agreement with the licensed post office partners. It's our first agreement in 26 years, so it's pretty landmark for us. <laughs> um, one of the things that we are doing is that we're rolling out new technology, and this is the first time we've had a major technology investment in the post offices for over 30 years. This is going into our licensed post offices. Historically, they used to have to pay Australia Post for this. We are providing it for them. And I'd like to acknowledge the support of CBA, Westpac and NAB, who've underwritten that investment for us. Um, I will pass to Dave, because I know he's fasting to share with you the good news that we have in the agreement. He's smiling, at least. <laughs> so, Senator, just in regards to your question around what we do with those transactions, they are based upon mode apps, whereby we actually look at the time it takes for the transaction to occur. So, it actually looks from the time the customer is in the queue to the whole service being done. And we do that not on the, the fastest person, but on the what happens when the average person goes through those transactions. So averages can be misleading at times. Uh, Both ways, you know, yes. In, if, if we're dealing with um, rural communities, especially ones with more, a high proportion of aged or people without computers and not tech savvy, then it's going to take longer. They can in some cases, um, so, but we do look at that as the overall around both the, the swings and the roundabouts that happen with that. Um, from what we've recently done with the changes to the payments, we've based everything based upon work. So we moved from whereby it was just a standard fee to paying for scanning. So part of what we're doing as part of the first stage was to really evaluate what, what was the work effort and how a licensee has been compensated for that. And we're always ongoing with that around looking at when transactions change, around looking around how they look from a time basis. And we know some transactions get longer and some get shorter due to the efficiency and the changes. Yeah. Speaking of time, Senator Roberts, somebody that, that is sorry? your time. That is your time, sorry. So Thank I'll you, uh, return the call to Senator Ocutt. Thanks very much. Um, I just got a few questions around databases of, for delivery points. So can you tell me what databases does Australia Post rely on to keep an accurate record of delivery points and households? Uh, Senator Erin Kelly, Corporate Secretary, Australia Post. My apologies, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, Australia Post maintains a database of postal delivery addresses, um, and that's by our addressed address post team. On a regular basis, that database is updated from information from local councils, state land authorities, and in fact, our own people. Okay. So. Does Australia Post buy them or do you develop them yourself? And that database is Australia Post's. So you've developed that, yep, okay. Does um, Australia Post make use of the geocoded national address file? Uh, Australia Post actually contributes to the GNAF. Okay. How accurate is that? Uh, sorry, Senator, is that the GNAF or yes. the Australia Post contribution? Oh. Both, maybe. Um, I can't oh, comment particularly on... Particularly the geocoded. I can't comment on the GNAF, as Australia yeah. Post are only a contributor to that. Okay. But the postal address file, which um, forms a basis of the GNAF, yeah. uh, Australia Post are confident that that is accurate. Okay. Does it tend to overestimate or underestimate the number of premises and delivery points? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And do you find that the databases you rely on are any less accurate in regional areas as opposed to metropolitan areas? No. no. Okay. And so what process do you go through to refine the accuracy of that database? Do you have a process? Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, on a regular basis, yep. we get updates from local councils, yep. uh, state land authorities, and also our own people. And when I mean our own people, it's when they go on their delivery rounds, oh, okay. they so can see when new addresses yep. or, or delivery points have been added. Okay, fantastic. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is for Mr McNamara. 
So I'm told that uh, in, a, in Australia Post's February 2018 response to a current affairs expose of the appalling treatment of postal franchisees, you claimed you were, quote, undertaking, all it's quoted, undertaking a comprehensive review of current licensees' payments. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, almost two years ago. Um, 2,900 postal franchisees, it, we found out, found out earlier this year that promised payment reform is to be in stages. Nothing was ever mentioned about this at the time. Stage one has taken over a year with the majority of officers seeing no change in their income and some are even worse off. So it is now 20 months and licensees have heard nothing with regards to stage two. What can you do to fast track this review to ensure that franchisees are paid at least a basic wage? I know you've said there are improvements, but this is saying stage two is not there. S Senator, when um, I will let Mr McNamara answer that question in more detail. I would like to acknowledge, though, that when that took place, in um, those comments took place in February 2018, I gave a commitment that if we um, were able to secure the bank at post agreement, not in this room, by the way, but I gave a commitment to the LPOs, I would ensure that their minimum rates of pay were reviewed significantly. We gave them a 25% increase in their minimum rate of pay, and we gave it them effective from, I think it was 1st of January this year. So that has taken place. We gave them a 50% increase in their transaction costs. I don't know anybody who's had a 50% pay rise other than what, and I'm not saying they don't deserve it, I absolutely believe they do, and I really want my licensed of, post office partners that, to be... Of course, that 50% that can be also looked upon as uh, generous, or it can be looked upon as saying that the original mark was really low. It, so I'm not, it, not, not here for an argument on that. No, I'm no, just no, I absolutely, I, I, you know, Senator, people are, of course, entitled to their opinions, and I have deep respect for my licensed post office partners, but I don't see it as generous or really low. I see it as fair. And I made that commitment to the licensed post offices. We've paid them. We put it into place as soon as effective as the new agreement was signed, which was the 1st of January. Thank you. So there wasn't any hesitation. They actually got the benefits of that agreement before Australia posted. But David, do you want to add? So Senator, just going on from that and answering your question, we regularly do look at all of the um, the different payments associated with identity is what you're talking about here. So we look at that on an annual basis and we have reviewed them over the years. They are an ongoing review that we look in that space. Part of the review that we looked at in what we did in last year for the implementation on the 1st of January was we had a look at the changes between letters and parcels to ensure that where the growth of Australia Post was, licensees' payments would be that associated with That was a significant that. thorn, yeah. Yeah, so it was a change out. And, and as um, Ms Holgate said previously, that we've seen an increase in the amount of remuneration licensees are receiving. And that's been part of the fact that now, if they're doing bulk mail for parcels, they're getting remunerated the right amount of money. So rather than it being where it was on letters previously, now they're actually getting a scanning fee and actually getting remunerated. Remunerated exactly the same amount as they should have been previously. Well, I appreciate your response, and I especially appreciate your commitment that you've made publicly today. So that'll be something people can hold you to. So that's great. I'm very happy to be held yeah, accountable for supporting the licensed post offices. Fantastic.